My name is Hannah McLeod and I work for the City Mental Health Alliance Hong Kong. This clip is part of a series of gathering viewpoints from experts focused on supporting employees to stay mentally healthy amid COVID-19. This week, we welcome Hannah Reedy, who is a clinical psychologist and CEO of Mind Hong Kong. Welcome, Hannah. Thanks, Hannah, for that introduction. And thank you also to CMHA Hong Kong for inviting me to be a part of this series. I'm Hannah Reedy and I'm the CEO of Mind Hong Kong. We're a mental health charity dedicated to making sure that nobody here is having to face a mental health problem alone. We were set up in 2017 and among other things have since trained nearly 3,000 people on mental health awareness and support and 40,000 people plus reach our website every month looking at our resources and information which helps people to understand a bit more about mental health and the realities of what that might be. We're all about trying to raise awareness, help understanding and decrease the stigma surrounding mental health for everyone. As well as being CEO, I'm also a clinical psychologist and do run some practice in Hong Kong. I'm hoping that this will allow me to give you all both the insights from Mind Hong Kong as well as a more clinical perspective about COVID-19 and what's next for our mental health. Today, I'm looking to talk about the impact of men in terms of mental health of COVID so far, thinking about what the current picture is as we start returning to work and to school and to other normal aspects of life, and then thinking about what we can be doing in our workplaces across Hong Kong in order to try and help with some of these mental health impacts for everyone. It's certainly been a topic of conversation in the Mind Hong Kong offices as we've started to move back into office work as to how best we can make that adjustment and support each other through this transition. So to start, I wanted to take you through a graph that we've created that tracks the level of distress, both in terms of low mood and isolation in the teal and anxiety in the orange across the course of this COVID pandemic. It's really important to say that this is based on anecdotal notes and then some research that's been collected over time, but this isn't a research driven, totally objective graph and summary. We're also really keen to point out that everybody's mental health journey through this time is individual. You might relate to some of this, but sometimes things won't feel right and that's okay. We hope it can still be of help. So the first point to make is that right back at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, Hong Kong didn't start from a low level of mental health distress. The social unrest meant that we'd already been finding that our well-being was in some way compromised due to the uncertainty and instability that was occurring around this time. When COVID first started rearing its head, the Hong Kong population had experience of something similar. Many were still impacted and affected from memories of SARS, where suicide rates were at their highest point on record. Therefore, our resilience was lowered even before COVID hit and started having an impact. Come early February, when we started hearing about the cases in Hong Kong, there was a big spike of anxiety. People were panic buying. I'm sure you will all remember the issues we had finding toilet roll. And there were high levels of reactive stress and anxiety about what was happening. People were talking about it all the time. They were posting about it on social media all the time. And it was all that people could really think about. Facing those uncertainties of what to come was very, very difficult for lots of people. And it caused it to feel very hard to relax and caused an increase in anxiety and stress. The rest of the world were looking in on us as well, as apart from China, Hong Kong was one of the first countries to really be impacted. So those of us who have international connections will be finding that the concerns of their friends and family would also be having an impact on their own mental health. After a while of this panic, we started to realise that this wasn't a short term situation. The human body can't sustain a chron an acute anxiety response forever and therefore we started to calm. The initial stress response started to deplete and we started to adapt. There were new routines coming in that allowed us to feel that there was some sense of normality, even though it was a very unusual one. The social media and the traditional media around COVID, however, which was now more of an international issue, perpetuated anxiety 
people weren't able to relax and they weren't able to find themselves um, in any of the benefits of working from home or adapting to new routine. Instead, they still felt very, very nervous about what was going on around them. After a while of this routine, things started to get harder. And here we start to see a rise in low mood and isolation. Loneliness was becoming more apparent as people were finding that the working from home, the cancellation of schools led to more time by themselves. Lots of plans, both short, medium and then long term, started to be cancelled. And that meant that people were starting to find that they were feeling a bit hopeless. There were social distancing recommendations that were causing quite a lot of adaptations to life and people were finding that very difficult. And now as we come to the present, two things are going on. There are some uncertainties about what the new normal will look like as people start going back to work in school and that's causing anxiety. But also, people have started returning to normal, normality and normalcy, which is making people feel a little bit more relaxed and less lonely. So both the anxiety and the low mood are playing off one another in different ways for different people, which is causing a bit of a middling effect. We ran some research just last week in the third week of May, and we were looking at the impact of COVID-19 on people's well-being. We surveyed a thousand Hong Kong residents in conjunction with HKU and actually found that levels of mental well-being had improved from September 2020. This is likely to be a snapshot in terms of what the community is feeling like right now. If we checked this a little while ago, we wouldn't have seen the same results. But what we can see here is that there may be some mental resilience going on. There were main concerns that people had at the moment were around both the past and the future of society, as well as concerns about their own financial situation. So people are starting to now look ahead and look at bigger picture stuff, which is impacting on their mental well-being. So we're seeing two main camps on the return to work. Some people are finding that returning to work and getting back to normality is a welcome change. People will be eager to resume work to get back to the day-to-day -day activities that they lost, connecting with co-workers, and also a potential lack of worry around this job security as they can start to get back into their job and really take the bull by the horns. However, still others are seeing the return to work as a stressor. People are still very worried about health implications of being in very dense offices and in meeting spaces and taking public transport so much. As we know, Hong Kong is one of the densest populations in the world and people are justifiably worried. People are also a little bit worried about getting back to that fast pace of life, whereby they may have been enjoying a slightly slower pace without the commute. And this means that it's totally normal to be having quite a few different psychological reactions to the fact that we are now starting to return to work. People might be feeling anxiety, worry or apprehension. All of these uncertainties mean are totally understandable. We're concerned about our own well-being and our family's well-being. That safety aspect of returning to work is adding to that stress. We're also known in Hong Kong for having some of the longest working hours in the world and being constantly busy. So for those of us who managed to slow down a little during the pandemic without saying any negative impacts on their job or their productivity, the idea of returning to that faster pace of life might not feel so appealing. For others of us, we might feel joy and relief. The social distancing measures might have meant we had to spend more time being cooped up indoors whether that be with our families, with our friends or alone. This could have been a big challenge given the limitation of the living spaces in Hong Kong. We're pretty small in terms of the amount of room that we have to live. Given the huge change from the norm of being able to escape to work, we may find that people are feeling quite relieved about being able to get out and get back into the office and socialise. That reinstatement of activities, socialising or work or even school, will mean a big sense of joy, particularly as we can go out, we can meet friends, see colleagues, go shopping, eat out, and all the things that might have made us happy in the first place. And then finally, there might be a sadness and reluctance within you. Some people have really enjoyed the flexibility and privacy of working from home. They might prefer it. They might have enjoyed spending more time with their family and doing the things they enjoy. It's been long enough now that for many, working from home has become a norm. 
And if you've adjusted to this way of working, and if it sounds familiar to you, then it's completely understandable if resuming business as usual actually creates a secondary sense of loss, different from the feelings of loss caused by social distancing. So here are our top tips in terms of how to manage your return to work. We think it's important to take your time. As long as work allows, slowly ease back into that office life. Try and be flexible with your schedule. Prioritize self-care. It is a change in routine and it will send you off balance. So therefore make sure you are looking after yourself and checking in on yourself regularly. Continue exercising. Some of us may have exercised whilst we were at work, at gyms or at classes that fitted around our working day and therefore had to adjust to new routines when we were working from home. But continue exercising or commence it if you aren't already doing. Even if it's a 30 minute walk around your neighbourhood or taking an online class. Do whatever it is that makes you feel safe and comfortable but keeps you feeling healthy. Check in with your colleagues too. As well as looking out for yourself, look out for others as they may have been feeling any of that range of emotions we've discussed. Ask them how you're doing and foster a culture of knowing that it's okay not to be okay at work. Talk to your manager and be transparent with how you're feeling about returning to work. The chances are that they will feel at least some of the same emotions as you as well. If you did create hobbies or a routine that you really enjoyed, don't see this as the end. Find ways of fitting them into your new working life and create a work balance that works for you. And just like work, try not to overly plan in too many social events with friends or family as this can be overwhelming. Take it slow and steady and transition back to the lifestyle you previously led gradually and gently. Allow yourself time in order to make sure that you're feeling well adjusted and still actually doing all the things that you want to do. And finally, it's really important to try and limit the amount that you check the news. Especially back at work, you may find that you're getting back into a habit of checking old news sites that you may have got out of whilst you're at home. Try and avoid doing this too often. Check it once or twice a day and turn off notifications. It's going to help you avoid feeling overwhelmed. We hope that this information has been helpful for you in terms of thinking about what the mental health situation looks like in Hong Kong right now and how you can help yourselves and other peoples with it. We've got lots more information on our website, minds.org.hk, and we also have lots of information for young people. In collaboration with Kelly Support Group, our youth services are called Cool Minds, and you can find them on coolmindshk.com. Over the next month, we're going to be releasing lots of resource and information about transitioning back into work and into school and managing your mental health throughout the month of June. So please do keep, keep looking at our social media and our website for that. We have some specific tips on managing your anxiety and mental health through COVID-19 at the third link. And finally, we are creating a large scale survey in conjunction with other countries to understand better the impact of people's mental health and COVID. Have a look at the link and CMHA Hong Kong will also send this link out and we'd be very grateful if you could circulate it to your colleagues. Any questions, give us a shout, hello at mind.org.hk. Thank you very much.